Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome ye all to Grim Dawn on the Xbox Series X. This game was released in 2016 for PC, since then it has had several expansion packs, and with Grim Dawn Definitive Edition, which is what we are playing on the Xbox Series X, we get all of the DLC. So, let us, I have never played this game, I am brand new to it, so this is all fresh to me, so it'll be nice for you to see me stumble through it, I am sure. Uh, let's work our way through this uh, title screen for a second. There was a couple of initial screens just to set up the screen dimensions and the brightness. A, and then you sign into this screen and the profile comes up. So you can change from main campaign to crucible and single player to multiplayer or host multiplayer. Normal difficulty which is what I'm going to play at. Well, actually, the other two are locked anyway, because you need to complete normal by the looks of it. And this is a veteran thing. Veteran significantly increases the challenge of normal difficulty for experienced ARPG players, action RPG, for anyone that doesn't know what that is, and provides a 10% experience gain bonus. Not for the faint of heart. Veteran mode can be toggled on and off in the main menu at any time. All right, okay. Interesting if there's a trophy that goes with that though that might be defuncted if you turn it off. Interesting. Well, we'll see how we get on in normal, and if I feel like I want to up the ante a bit and get more experience gain, then we can change to veterans. That's quite a good idea. A uh, options wise, I can't see anything to do with changing the frame rates or anything like that. You've got uh, in gameplay, you've got gamepad target lock and Lock Mac rotation. I might put that on later, but we'll see how we go on with it. Uh, lock item pickup. Auto loot materials. No, we don't. Uh, that's quite a nice feature, isn't it? Check to automatically collect components, consumables, and crafting materials when you step near them. I might turn that on actually, because yeah, it's not doing weapons, is it? Just c components, consumables, and crafting materials. That'd be well handy actually. Might put that on later. Enable camera shake for critical hits and other effects, and enable gore. Oh, I want gore, people. Absolutely. And then there's a whole bunch of ticks in here for the interface itself. Uh, we'll have a look through these maybe at another time. People can say, if anyone who's played this game can always send me feedback as to what they think was useful to tick on and off. Don't want to spend too long on it in here. And then we've got the audio options. Um, error voice messages. Enable voice error messages such as when the character cannot carry... Oh, okay, yeah. So you can actually turn it off. I am encumbered. <laughs> so well thought through. This game, by the way, is made by the a lot of the same developers that made Titan Quest, but a lot of people say that it is better than Titan Quest. A very different uh, environment and universe as well. So, shall we create a character, people? Without further ado. Um... Well, I think we shall most certainly keep our default for our RPGs, people. Sky is going to be a female and a veteran. Oh, there's hardcore as well. Blimey. Death is permanent. Uh, I think not. <laughs> not the way I play, people. Not at the moment. Right, let's create the character. And, okay, a Sky level one. <laughs> what do I do now? Anyone? Anyone? Any ideas? Main campaign. Oh, start. Thank you. The big start button, Stephen. That's what you're looking for. Uh, I was actually looking for some way of developing the character, but we'll see what happens next. I'm sure it'll all become clear, people. Got very good reviews this game. We paid a heavy price, but the trap worked. You seem surprised. It's been a while since we've had a win. How long will it hold? I've never entrapped a being like this, but the bonds hold for now. How do we dispose of it? I'm just a witch. You're the soldier. If it bleeds, I can kill it. 
How do you kill a spirit, though? If you kill the mortal vessel while it's bound, the spirit may perish within. If it escapes... It's listening to us. What are you? Others of your kind, nameless, the fear. Why have you invaded our world? Your world. We existed first, and we managed by your corrupt gods. Your pride opened the way, and how we return to reclaim the one that should be ours. I've heard enough of this rubbish. Let's hang it. Destroy this vessel, and I will find another. I have tasted its desires and emotions. Your kind is weak. You have already lost this one. Do it. Captain! Cut him down! What? Are you mad? Better safe than sorry. The spirit has fled. This is a human now. The captain is correct. When they awaken, they won't remember a thing. The ethereal was right. The war is lost. We're a resistance now. And we need every human survivor we can call to our cause. Maybe this one here can still die with some honor. If they ever wake up, send them to me. If they don't, bury them deep with the others. Here we go. Hangman Jarvis. Oh, I was the one getting hanged, was I? It's also worth noting that I think this this game was developed based on a sort of group group funding type thing, which is quite cool. Still drawing breath, I see. You're one lucky bastard, I'll give you that. Best go speak to Captain Bourbon right away. He seems to have a plan for you now that we've spared your life. Okay. It's interesting, they've stuck with the mouse pointer uh, idea, which may well work for the game to certain degrees, but I'm not overly sure about how that's going to work. Oh, hang on, we've got A, X, yeah, okay, so the buttons will take over. I think this is just for manipulating what goes in each slot, maybe. And then you've got your health over here, then you've got your energy over there. Let's speak to Captain Bourbon. Bourbon's a biscuit, isn't it? <laughs> Let's do it. What happened? How did I get here? You were possessed. So we uh, strung you up. Seems the spirit fled your body before your life ran out. I'd have left you to hang, but uh, the captain had other plans. He sees some purpose in you, and I'm not going to argue. And where can I find the captain? He's um, up the road, in the courtyard. Don't make me regret cutting you down. I'll be on my way then. Thank you, sir. Might be him over there. I think we might have to up the brightness a little bit. Okay. Options menu. Hmm. That's color blindness controller. Huh. Okay. Not overly sure where we change that then if we can't change it in there. 
there was a brightness option when I first started the game up, but it doesn't seem to be in the menu. We'll come back to it. That's Barnabas. So you're the one we almost hung. <laughs> I didn't really see a sense in it, but then again, no one really cares what old Barnabas thinks. You really should go speak with the captain. He'll be the one deciding whether there's a place for you here at Devil's Crossing. Okay, take care. Training dummy. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> that went fairly well. Right, there's a little mini map at the top, which seems to be a blue icon for people on the map, and there seems to be a star uh, waking to misery, which will be our quest, I assume. Arcovian, ah, right, uh, bridge repair site. This bridge once connected Devil's Crossing to Arcovian foothills to the northwest. It must have been, uh, it must be restored before you can cross it. it we'll take six scrap and three thousand iron bits to repair. Okay, nice. Uh, so let's just make a note of that quest. Waking. To misery. Okay, let's go. See if we can find Baron of us. Uh, no, Bor Borben. Captain Borben. Hey, uh, you unlocked Rift Gate. Did I? By doing nothing. Harmond. Oh, okay. We're not going to get voice acting for everybody then, by the looks of it. Oh, look, it's the possessed one. Tell you what, I've got something that needs doing and I'll pay you good to see it done. I'm not quite sure you've got what it takes, but come back with some blood on your boots and maybe I'll reconsider. Just try to make sure it's not your own blood. Okay. So he doesn't want to give me it. That looks like a shop. Carrick. Oh, hello. Well, we don't have any money anyway, I don't think, at the minute. But uh, skills. Oh, hello. Yeah. So it looks like you can build your character into anything you want. You just have to buy the skills to tap into it. Soldier, Demolitionist, Occultist, Nightblade, Arcanist, Shaman, Inquisitor, Necromancer, and o Oathkeeper. And then you've got Devotions, ah, Star Signs and such. So it looks like it's got a very healthy <laughs> up upgrading and power system, people. Check that out, you've got the little turtle. Or tortoise, even. Tortoise. Falcon. The one that seems to be highlighted is uh, Crossroads. Crossroads mark the changing of ways. The opening of endless possibilities. Yeah, so it looks like you can go in whatever direction you want. Imp. The bull. Okay. Fair, fair. Fair enough. Right, let's come out of there for a second, speak to the captain, see what's what. John Borbon. You're not looking too bad for someone just come back from the brink of death. You were taken, possessed by the same creatures that have been reanimating these zombies here. Normally I'd have burned you with the rest to be safe, but we've lost too many people to the dead. I need someone expendable, someone with nothing to lose but a lot to gain. Right now, you're that person. Prove your worth to me. And the survivors of Devil's Crossing may just welcome you. Okay. What is it you want me to do? The bodies of the dead are rising again in some horrible unlife. Corpses don't just get up and move around on their own. Something is reanimating our deceased with ethereal energy. 
We have observed the dead for some time, and they appear to be flooding lower crossing from the burial hill, just beyond town. I want you to go to the burial hill, find whatever is controlling these abominations, and destroy it. And where can I find uh, Burial Hill? You will need to fight your way through Lower Crossing. Once you've crossed the stream on the far side of town, there will be a beaten path leading up to Burial Hill. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I'd be asking a lot of my people to welcome you with open arms too. Help us in our hour of need, and I will open Devil's Crossing to you. Okay, I'll find what's reanimating those corpses. Corey the Keeper. Well met, friend. Have I seen you before? Perhaps we've met on the road somewhere. Corey is my name. I'm a traveller, a trader, a keeper of the strange. There was a time when, well, no matter. All right. There was a time when, well, no matter. I've travelled far, always in the shadows. I'm tired of these illusions. What's that? Say no more, I have just the product for you. Receive item, illusion be gone. Okay. Sorry, keeper. We'll have a look in our inventory in a sec and see what these people are giving us. I'm wondering if I was meant to pick one of the three. I am Lance, uh, Lancel. I am Lancel, and I've travelled the world in search of one worthy of my collection. Are you such one? I'm tired of the illu these illusions. Then start fresh with the illusion be gone. True, I already have that. And Rook. Sorry, but I can't let you enter. All right, okay, that's just the... Uh... Okay, I'm not sure what that was all about. Fighting! Mighty patchwork jacket of the void. It's interesting. We've not. Had to, I mean, I think you can obviously determine what you are by picking what skills you pick from that menu we were looking at. So you just start as whatever. It's just a plain kit, which is why there was no creation in the, the beginning. Poisonous spiders. I don't think I have any particular moves or anything. Well, the big yellow bar at the bottom is clocking up, so our experience is going up the way. Get a level up soon enough. Ride your pony! Here we go. Map 
seems to have several paths to take. Should look at that level up as well now, actually. Let's have a look. Uh, well. Okay, question B. Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah, it looks like the world doesn't stop when you go into this menu, so... Didn't put the jacket on by the looks of it. Mighty Patchwork jacket of ah oh, required physique 64, and I've got a physique of 22. Nice jacket though. Scrap metal such as bolts, leather cords, and low-grade metals that can be used to fasten together items or structures. Tonic of mending seals wounds and mends broken bones. Fire to consume. Right stick to split the stack. Filled with 100% authentic illusion purging powder. Okay. Well, I've got a level up, but I don't seem to be able to... Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to see where it says on screen if I have any points. Ah, there we go. Three points available. Here it is. So we've got three points and we can spend them wherever we want to. Now here's here's where we start to build up what we're interested in. Force well, hang on a minute, let's just have a look at what the uh have a look at what the options were for skills. Map, factions. Okay. How do I move away from soldier? <laughs> it's like, is it character? No, it's not character because that's where the. I can't seem to undo the fact that I selected soldier. Ah, undo class. Here we go. Marvellous, right, okay. I think it, because they've kind of just really taken the whole mouse structure and brought it onto the Series X, well, onto console. I think it's only on Xbox, this game. Uh, it's just my brain's taken a minute to get used to what they've done. Uh, right, so let's have a look at the, the soldiers of Imperial Army were trained to survive in the most hellish conditions and hold the line against the deadliest enemies of the Empire. Soldiers prefer the use of close combat weaponry such as sword and shield, but can also be formidable with firearms. What a soldier may lack in outright damage output is made up for in fortitude and leadership. Right, so you can take a bit of a hit as a soldier, I think. Demolitionist, Pyro, pyrote, pyrotechnic masters of the Imperial Army. Demolitionists are part engineer and part sorcerer. They were used to break. They were used to break enemy ranks and breach fortifications with their devastating array of explosives and destructive magic. They usually prefer to fight at range, engaging enemies with guns, traps, explosives, but they can also be prolific, uh, proficient with melee weapons. I'm going to read through these, by the way, so if you are someone that's watching after the sort of premiere, you can wind forward if you don't want to see all of this. Once, once hunted by Imperial forces, uh, what are we on? Occultist. Once hunted by Imperial forces in an effort to control eldritch power, the occultist craft focuses heavily on summoning and borrowed powers granted by the three witch gods Bismil, or Bismil, Soliel, and Drieg. The diverse arts include abhorrent curses and spells that inflict damage with poison, acid, and entropic energy. Excelling with neither sword nor gun, they can use either augment uh, either to augment their offence. Okay. Night blade, two-handed daggers, looks of it. Night blades were clandestine warriors that sold their services to the great houses of the empire. 
Night Blades excel in, with all manner of martial weapons, but are even more feared for the deadly blade magic that is secret to their trade. Night Blades are not suited to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with tougher enemies and rely on illusion to, cl uh, to close for quick devastating attacks or fight from a distance with phantasmal blades. Arcanists, got to be a mage, isn't it? To arcanists, the manifestation of magic is not some unexplainable mystery or the will of the gods, but a science meant to be unraveled. This pursuit of knowledge drives all arcanists always eager to discover a new technique to make their namesake. Arcanists warp ethereal and elemental energy to their will, creating devastating demonstrations of power that rival small armies. However, such raw force leaves little in terms of defence. Yeah, like most mages, isn't it? Shaman! Hailing from the untamed Northlands, shamans were the spiritual leaders and guardians of their people, claiming an outstanding attunement to the wilds and their patron deity Mogdrogen. Or Mogdrogen. Shamans are capable of wielding the terrible forces of nature against their foes and calling upon savage beasts to come to their aid. Shamans excel in the use of brutal two-handed melee weapons but can easily adapt to other tools of war when conjuring their primal powers. That's quite a cool one to think about, isn't it? Inquisitor, as members of the esteemed Luminari Order, Inquisitors were responsible for protecting the, the Uralan Empire from the dangers of the arcane and occult, over the centuries the Inquisitors gathered countless relics of unimaginable power, but duty sometimes overcame safety. And some of these relics were studied and, and in turn replicated for the use of the Inquisition. While they excel with ranged weapons, Inquisitors are armed with an arsenal of relics and arcane runes that allow them to be more than capable in close quarter combat. Inquisitor looks quite handy, it looks like a gun type character. Through most modern necromancers hail, f uh, though most modern necromancers hail from the Order of Death's Vigil and the training of the mysterious Uruburuk, that's what I said, Uruburuk, not all choose the secluded life. While their profession naturally inspires fear and revulsion, the necromancers of Cairn seek balance through the research and mastery over the ultimate fate that awaits all mortals' death. Necromancers make heavy use of conjuring forth skeletal minions and sapping the very vitality from their unwary foes. Though entering the fray themselves, the martial weapons is not unheard of. Uh, Oathkeeper is finally the final one. Whether they hail from the Temple of Menhir or offer their souls to the Witch Gods, all Oath Keepers have two things in common. Unflinching loyalty and zealous fury. Oath Keepers are the guardians of sacred tombs, keepers of the faithful and ardent enforcers of celestial will. They do not merely hide behind a shield or their divine powers. To Oath Keepers, these are weapons upon which they shall spill the blood of the unworthy and exact their righteous wraths. Yeah, the Oath Keeper looks quite badass, doesn't it? So, I think out of those, I'd be tempted with Soldier or Oath Keeper or Inquisitor, I think. Um, I mean, that one there, the Demolitionist, can also be proficient with melee weapons. Uh, let's have a look inside. Can we see what moves they get? Fire Strike, a deadly alchemical technique, causes martial attacks to combat to combust the air around the enemy. Throw out an array of tiny electrical charge jacks with temporary stop enemies in their tracks. A blinding light temporarily infuses the enemy. Yeah, okay, so. Deadly alchemical technique causes martial attacks. I'm assuming that's any weapon will give out fire damage if that's the case. Okay. 
Okay, some good stuff in there then. What am I getting with soldier if I stick with soldier? Mark Markovian's advantage. The renowned tactician always needed to strike from the higher ground. The classic attack inspired by Markovian's battlefield tactics features a powerful downward strike to throw enemies off balance, weakening their defenses. Can activate with all default weapon attacks. Force wave. This attack requires a shield or two-handed melee weapon. Such force is channeled into the attack that it compresses in the very compresses the very air, projecting out a wave of energy that stuns and damages foes. Cadence. The use of this the use of weapon forms in combat gives your con your attacks a natural cadence with peaks and ebbs that will Jesus, I can't read this. And as that, while predictable, are none the less effective and difficult to, con to counter. Right, I think... Uh, I'm going to be tempted just as a something different than going sword and shield all the time. I'm wondering if I should do the Inquisitor one. Inquisitors are armed with an arsenal of relics, arcane runes, and allow them to be more capable and close. Um, or Oathkeeper, I suppose. What's in here? Requires a shield with the strength of the earth flowing through you by the blessings of Minea. Hurl a magical aegis that will home in upon your target and leave it staggered and dazed before returning to you. Both keep a charge in a battle with prayers on their tits. Uh, when used as default weapon attack, righteous fervor increases the intensity of your attacks with every strike. Okay, far too much to choose from, and I've been in here for ages now. We need to pick one at least, people. Soldier would be the easy option. I uh, I just wanted to try something a little bit more interesting to show off. Um, arcanists, shaman, oh the inquisitor, yeah. Let's do it. Let's see what the inquisitor's got. World of pain. With arcane runes carefully woven into their gear, even the voices of the Inquisitors are sufficient to inflict immense suffering upon the enemies of humanity. With a single word, your foes writhe in pain as arcane energies assault their, every, their very being. Their very being, yeah. Ranged expertise. Uh, bursting round. A carefully calibrated round with that explodes upon contact with the target to consume them and nearby phones in flames. Nice. Requires five additional points in Inquisitor. Right, okay, so you need points to be able to top these up. So, there's Word of Pain and there is Stormbox of Elgaloth. Open the rune Stormbox of Elgaloth surrounding the target bow with a psychic energy that electrifies the very air around them, shocking the target and all unfortunate enough to stand close. Requires one additional point in Inquisitor. Well, where do I put in... Where's my Inquisitor points go? Ah, down here. I see. So, we need points in here as well as the moves. I've seen this before. Uh, we can actually have ranged expertise now. I see. So that's going to have a line going down to here. So that requires four more additional points. So I think we can take one of them. It's either that or we invest another point into there and just take one of these. I think we'll take the electric one. Defo. Oh, I'm liking this, people, now that I'm getting into it. Look at that. The tree structure's awesome. So... We could take two here, actually, and then spend the next points on. It's marvellous. Or undo that one. Well, in fact, yeah. 
Uh, how do I undo a skill? Shit. <laughs> Can I undo a skill? Yeah. My god. Mine a god. I think it might have assigned them now that I shut it down. <laughs> undo points was the button I was looking for. Ah, assign skills, here we go. So we've got A for our basic move. Uh, can we change to the right trigger for... Yeah, we can. So right trigger. We'll have our standard move on for now. And then A will have, uh, actually no, don't do that. On X we'll have Lightning. And on B we'll have World of Pain or Word of Pain. Pet Attack. Right, let's try that for now. Marvellous. Okay, so yeah, remember for next time. Well, we've got two moves out of it. I was going to possibly put two in there, but... I didn't want to start two tree structures was my point. Because <laughs> now I've got to invest 16 points in both of those. We might get the option to remove points at some point. Also, is there a save button in this game or not? I don't seem to be seeing a save button anywhere. It must be auto save, people. I'm also not overly convinced that this is a 60 FPS game at the moment. I mean, it feels smooth enough, but it could just be the graphic type. I mean, it does feel smooth around the bottom, but when you look at the surrounding stuff, you get a little bit of a flicker. Okay, I didn't actually take my fight button off of A. Oh, hello. Right, let's get a group of them together, see what our lightning's like. That skill's not ready. I see. Nice. That's pretty cool, isn't it? One thing I wasn't able to do in uh, Titan Quest was change the normal attack button, was I? It used to frustrate the hell out of me. I'm not overly sure where I'm meant to be going. I didn't seem to be anything on the actual uh, mini map to tell me that I'm going in the right direction or anything. Back at the bridge, done a massive circle there. <laughs> Poisoned that. Yeah, I think it is 60. I think it's just some of the 
images get a little bit of a flicker as you Enter the cave under Burial Hill is what we're attempting to do, I think. It's one of those games, again, that feels very lifelike, you know, like, it doesn't feel overly... You know, you're not doing three triple flips and throwing magic out your ass, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just feel like it's very uh, down to earth and grounded, which is quite nice. I prefer that in, a, in an RPG. Something flashed up red there, wasn't it? Also, I kind of like the ones that are slightly sl slower paced, like this. Woohoo! Level up and ride your pony! More moves for us people some nice quick level ups here that's what I like to see this is a massive game apparently there's loads to do in here searing almond's axe oh hello might have a look at that people hey is there a compare option yes there oh it does it automatically well that's a lot better than what I'm wearing one handed sword yeah with 7 to 15 damage it's got 10 to 26 uh, 1.84 attack per person. Attacks per person. Which is a little bit less than what I've got on. But it's heavier, I guess, the axe. Plus 27 damage per second, if equipped. What? 3 to 4 fire damage, 5 cold damage, 8% cold damage, plus 8% cold damage, 12% physical damage converted to fire damage. Nice. Ice Granted skills, ice spikes. 8% chance on attack. Launch a spike of rock solid ice to impel your enemies does that mean i it gives me a spell to cast or it'll do it automatically then 1.5 skill uh, second skill recharge chance to pass through enemies and cold damage nice could do with a better shield it's a bit shit that one i've got in it well, we could do a better everything, to be fair. Right, should we level up while we're here? Be rude not to, isn't it? Um, it does seem to be that, yeah, the undo class button is gone now. So, I think, though, I read somewhere that you can delve into multiple classes in this game at some point. So, we can't do it at the moment. I, I think... We we're going to take a point of that, weren't we? Which is ranged expertise, yeah. We don't actually have a ranged weapon yet, though. Through... What's that other one? Oh, we can't have that yet, but what was it? Carefully calibrated round that explodes, yeah. This is a ranged weapon bonus, yeah. But it's, I haven't got a ranged weapon yet, but it'll come in handy once we do get one. So... I feel like I might pop it into here. I'm going to go up to five if I can. It's also boosting our magic and stamina each time we do this, I think. Or whatever it's called, energy. Got one point left. do one more that'll get us to four i think let's do that so next one we'll put one more in here and then we'll put a couple in our skill sets it's one of those games when i initially looked at it i thought mm, not sure <laughs> about this you know when i first opened up the menu and we started playing it together I was like, hmm, I'm not sure about this. But the more I'm playing it, the more I'm getting excited for it because I can see how in-depth it goes. 
um, how real it feels, how lovely the world feels. Oh, hello, yeah, running through water. We like that, people. Before we go there, though, I'm going to go into... Yeah, the more I'm playing it, the more excited I'm getting for playing more of it. And even when I was thinking about buying it, I mean, I've, I have bought this. It's, you know, I'm not anywhere near the size of a YouTube channel where people give me free games, people. Uh, but, you know, I, I nearly bought it and then I was like, Meh. I looked at some gameplay and I was like, I'm not sure if I want to spend £45 on it. I guess uh, the more I'm playing it, the more I'm thinking it was a good investment. Because for that £45, you're getting all of the DLC that's come with the, the health phase, a big fella. All of the DLC that came with the, over the last, what, four or five years with the PC version. There's a lot of love going into this game, you can tell already. Um, superior Barog's body armor of blah, yeah. If I hold down A, will I get the option to... Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, that's a load of load, isn't it? <laughs> it's loads of stuff. Right, I'm going to assume that yellow is magical and green is more special. Um, not over... Yeah, I'm ha having a little bit of difficulty as... Ah, there we go. So it highlights it if you're on it. I'm not seeing anything like... In Titan Quest, you can hold down A and it'll let you pick up everything... Well, let you sift through what's on the ground, but I'm not seeing anything like that here. So we'll just pick it all up and have a look. Let's see what we got. Ooh, oh, we've got a gun. And have we got weapon sets? Yes, we do. So we can have the sword and we can have the uh, gun on as well. Brilliant. I think we'll be putting our... Oh, we can't put that on yet. God damn it, I can't put any of my cool stuff on. Ooh, I can put that on though. A this Ooh. Well it's possible oh it's a two-handed. It's a magic two-handed. I don't want to use that. I'm not gonna go two-handed, I'm gonna go one-handed. Fair enough. Okay, what else did we pick up? Scrap metal, yeah. Okay. So we're picking up a load of scavenging stuff at the moment, which is fine. We'll find a use for it, I'm sure. That kind of hat is well cool. Um. Oh, there's our stats up here, look. What? I've got two points available. I didn't know I had to do stuff in here as well. Ah, here's my physique. Ah, right, okay. I missed that, people. So we've got a couple of things to spend in here. So there's two places you need to level up. A bit like Titan Quest, I guess. So physique... Uh, hmm. I could do with it telling me what... Uh, what they are. Ah, here we go. A strong spirit increases the flow of your energy into your being and allows you to withstand the spiritual burden of using more powerful enchanted items. Spirit also increases your capacity for pain and magnifies the damage of magical attacks. Right, it's a major type thing. A cunning intellect improves your combat technique, increases physical pierce, bleed and mental trauma damage. Cunning also increases your capacity for pain, your chance of landing melee and ranged attacks and critical hitting enemies. Yeah, so it's those top two I want, isn't it? So how much does it go up each time I spend a point? So that's going to go to 68 physique. Hang on, what did I need for that hat? 74. And the armour... Ooh, I can put my armour on. So I think if I spend the next point... I might not quite make the hat yet, but we could get it on the next one, maybe. Oh, I can. Nice. So it's going up about eight each time, I think, that was. Oh. What? Oh, it's spirit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck it, hell. Spent it in the wrong bloody thing. Oh, I can undo it right enough. But the thing is, well, that's the question, though, isn't it? Am I gonna? What am I gonna want to put on? One spirit isn't gonna get me to seventy-four, though. 
So that looks like a magic caster hat. Yeah, it is. It's a magic caster hat. So we're probably not too bothered about it. Probably benefit from the... Uh... I'm wondering if I, if I undo that and put one in physique and one in cunning, it'll keep them sort of in balance, I think. Um, that's interesting. What was physique on before I did that? I was on 60, fair enough. So it looks like Cunning starts off as the highest one for this character type, so I suspect it is important. Yeah, fair enough. So one there and one there. Marvellous. Well, we can put our armour on. Ah, oh, sweet. And we've got our gun now. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Got that on the old trigger button as well. Journal of the Inquisitor. Look what these do. Oh, hello. Put that up there. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I went this character now. I mean, that said, you can still use these sort of weapons on other characters. It's just there. Uh, I suspect that they're... Uh, these are just sort of readable items. I'm not sure if we'll get an XP for that. But I think, obviously, there's... I, I would suspect perks to... Using the class with the weapon. Or the skill sets with the weapon. The class with the weapon. Oh, I'm loving the gun already. Brilliant. What's that there? Green thing on the floor. I've lost all track of where I am, people, in this map. I don't want to forget about my other attacks. I love that lightning as well. Bloody awesome. I can see myself losing my, my life in this game, people, already. I think I might activate that thing that picks up crafting stuff automatically, you know. Consumables. If anything else, it kind of it just solidifies what I'm picking up. Yeah, well, what is useful to pick up in terms of weapons and armor and stuff. Name, but oh, hello, got a bloody two-handed ranged gun. Never considered there would be. I wonder if you can dual wield uh, guns. By the way, might be able to. Well, single-handed ones. I mean, um, sorry, I was going to go in here and just uh, options and. Always show monster health bars. What? Uh, well, that's unticked, but the health bars are on. Uh, oh, gameplay. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if you can only do those sort of things in the main menu then. Yeah, it looks like it. I think I'll be able to change the brightness and those sort of settings in the main menu, but you can't do them in here. Seems reasonable. Right, okay. I am, however, struggling a little bit to figure out where the bloody hell I am. Oh, hello. <laughs> Just about to... Jesus Christ, we've been playing for 54 minutes already, people. What is going on? I'm assuming that hurts me. Yeah, it does if I run through it.
It does have that real feel of a PC game, this as well, which isn't something I've experienced an awful lot of. It's really, really nice. Yeah, something in there to shoot. a gun. Puncturing Francis's gun. Oh, that's a single one as well, right. Let's find out. Oh, hello. Picked up some pants, people. I've got worn leather pants on. These have got double the armour. 12, uh, 12 to 24 armour. Oh, nice. I tell you what, you can see the, the effort that's gone into the kit design as well. Very nice. Go on. I know it's not. Oh, you can only have one. You can only have one. Unless it's a dual wielding thing, of course. Definitely going to put the green gun on there, I think. Uh, maybe not. It's got fireball on the... Yeah, so 9 to 19 damage on the... Oh, right, okay, hang on. So that... Mm. 9 to 19 fire damage. 1 to 62 attacks per second. Right, it's got no physical damage. It's all fire damage, that gun. The one that I was wearing has got 12 to 16 physical damage. 18% armor piercing. One point. Yeah, I think the one I had on might have been better, you know. So, we'll have to figure out what green and yellow and whatever it means. Because there's so many games like this, and they all change the bloody colours of what they are. <laughs> like, Titan Quest was different to Diablo. Uh, I feel like I'm getting... Minus 12 damage per second if equipped. So the new one, the green one's got 3 to 4 piercing damage, 3 to 4 fire damage, and plus 9%. I'll tell you what, we'll try it and see what it's like. But I think that yellow one was decent, like, I'm not overly sure I want to be dumping that just yet. I feel like green is better than yellow, or it should be. But I don't know if that's true in that particular case. Has it got, uh, yeah, required cunning. So that's, required cunning is 25. And that's required cunning of 25. So, they're, yeah, they're both the same level kind of thing. Let's see what it's like. It's going to shoot some up. There's a door somewhere. Yeah, with the... With Titan Quest and such, like... You, Where's that crate at? <laughs> See, keep seeing things to shoot at. And, uh, it's in that house, I think. Yeah, in the map, you can kind of see it un unblank itself, if you like, for want of a better word. I haven't been noticing or paying enough attention to the little map to see if, yeah, it, the map doesn't unblank itself, so it's. Not like you can tell if you're redis if you're discovering something for the first time or not, which is going to make for oh, hello. It's a big book in there. It's going to make for a little bit of effort to determine whether or not you've been somewhere or not. Is the only thing. There's stairs over here, I think. I like the pace of it as well. I, I like the idea that I can venture around this world having a nosy and. Harbour Master's log. Not really sure why that's glowing. Puncturing scrap metal, great sword of al alacrity. Yes, that's what I said. Well, that'll be in our second. There must be a quick way of changing weapon sets. I think there might be a, a button down at the bottom there. I need to suss that out. Again, I've got a green on. 
but that's a required physique of 33 and the one I've got on is a required physique of 26. It's actually got some... Oh, that's a quest. 11 to 45 damage on this new one and it's 10 to 26 on the axe that I've got on. So I feel like the yellow one is the better. Oh, oh it's two-handed. That'll be why. So I'm going to stick with the axe then. All oh, right, heal is LB and RB. Just noticed. Right, well, I'm, I'm now trying to decide how long this episode is going to be, because I this is the day of the launch, about lunch time. It's about half past one in the afternoon. And I'm trying to decide, because I want to try and get the first episode up nice and quick. Because I feel like I might be one of the few people that are uh, trying this game out on launch day, and I think there'll be a lot of people out there wondering whether or not they want to spend their £45. Or whatever that is in dollars, fifty dollars, sixty dollars. To be fair, I think to buy all of the game and all of the DLC on Steam or wherever it is for PC. Woo! Level up and ride your pony. Uh, we've got. Um, it'll end up being around the same price, I think, is what I was seeing. Unless there's a sale on or something. But even with a sale on, I think once you bought all the DLC and everything, you'd still be looking at about $40, $50 or something, what the thing I was watching had said. It'd be nice to get to the... Oh, hello. Got a river. A river. I'd like to see some sort of save marker pop up. It might have been happening and I've not noticed. So the idea is that I will record this part, render it together, which takes another hour and a half for 60 FPS anyway. And then crack on for the rest of the night, recording loads more for the coming days. I'm going to try and get, as long as there's interest, but I'll try, I'm going to, I'm going to record more today through the night, well, afternoon and night. And I should be posting up uh, two episodes tomorrow, two episodes on Sunday. The Dragon uh, Dragon Age Origins that I had ready to rumble and Fable 3 FPS boost I had ready to rumble. Probably um, I've, I've moved those over to next week as secondary videos and I'll keep posting one of these up a day if uh, people are still interested in seeing more. Oh, I'm so glad I went a weapon like this. Ah, Burial Hill, here we go. Ether Corruption. Blimey. So is that something I have to go into, is it? wondering if it's like one of those corruption areas where you just get a shit ton of enemies until you die and then pop back out again. Should we give it a go before we... Uh... I was trying to get the name to pop back up but <laughs> it doesn't seem to now. Well, I am super excited to be playing more of this. Oh, hello. What does this do then? What? Not overly sure what I'm meant to be doing with that. Just seems to bring up a map. Very pretty map that I can not read very well. That I could do with a zoom button, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's like everything's tiny. It's almost like you're 
it's been designed for you to be sat really i mean i'm i'm on a 55 inch bloody massive sony 4k telly i'm finding that very hard to read as a map and i have not seen ah oh, wait a minute oh i just look on the top right there i just noticed you can expand the minimap brilliant well that's a that's a huge bonus because i was finding that quite hard to read um I'm not seeing a zoom for this map, however. It is, to be fair to it, it's very smooth. Um, it's just, if at some point we need to start pressing on bits of this, it could get a little bit fiddly. But gorgeous map, though. Look at it. And look at the size of it. Crikey. So, I feel like that corruption point is actually a teleport portal. I think we might have come across our first teleport portal, perhaps. Which I would say means, yeah, here we go, here we go. That's it. Lower crossing rift, yeah. That's it there. So we can actually teleport back to here now, I think. There we go. Excellent, yeah. So I could actually go and sell bits and bobs to this chappy here now, and then we can teleport back to where we need to be. So in fact, you can see the underbelly of Titan Quest in this game, without any doubt. Uh, our sell item is X. There you go. Ah, you can use these items. What do they do? Ah, you get experience for reading them. Nice. Yep, see the yellow bar going up at the bottom there. Uh, well, I'm not going to use a two-handed sword, so we'll get rid of those for now. Oh, hello. Sell. And two-handed axe, sell. I'm going to keep the guns for now. Oh, I ended up with three guns. Can't remember. Oh, um, can't remember having three. Anyway. 12 to 16. And that's another blunderbuss one. 10 to 20 physical. Just picked up another blunderbuss, didn't realise. Can sell those trousers. Hmm. I really like that hat. I feel like just upgrading my mage stuff just so I can put that hat on. <laughs> I'm going to keep that sword for now. Uh, no, it's two-handed, so I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to sell it. <clears throat> 16 to 45 damage. We could try a rifle. I might hang on to that just to try it in the next part, maybe see what it's like. Uh, mace, which I'm. Um, no, I'm not going to use a mace. Don't like I'm not, I've never been a mace fan, people. Oh, illusion be gone. That's what the guy gave me at the beginning. Filled with 100% authentic illusion purging powder. It must have a purpose at some point. Press Y to remove illusion. All oh, right. Ah, uh, okay. I think it's for unidentified things, people. I think that's what that might be. Illusions are... That, that sounds like what that's going to be about. Someone can tell me if I'm wrong, but that feels like what it is. Elixir of Spirit Restore. We'll hang on to those. <laughs> Is there an auto sort? I'm not seeing anything that says that. Rare one handed mace. Alright. Oh, it's rare. There you go. It's telling me what it is. Um, yeah, rare one handed mace. Magic one handed ranged. There, yeah, there you go. So yellow is magic, and green is rare. And then we may come across one that's, that sets, but... Okay, we know what they are now. What are those there? Heavy gloves. And that is a chilled steel. This steel is infused with the chilling blah blah blah, yeah. Well, I think I'll hang on to it. Oh, I'll get rid of that. That was a shiv we started with. Ooh. 
I'm very stoked for this game, people. The more I'm twiddling around with it. I don't know how this episode is going to come across. It is always a bit of a fumble about when you first enter a game, especially like this where there's so much to take into account but and get your head around. But uh, I hope you're feeling the buzz for this game that I'm feeling because it is really getting me excited. I'm really looking forward to playing a lot of this. I... Okay, I think that's probably as much as we can do in there, selling-wise. Uh, what? <laughs> What's happening, people? It said hit X to sell, so I, that's what I did. Oh, my goodness me. Right, I've, I've been dropping it rather than selling it. I don't know what's been going on there. I'll give you a good price for what I've got left. Sell item is X. Or was I... I don't understand. What? So, let's try and sell those. Come out of there. Around. Yeah. Well, that, that seemed to work. I'll give you a good price. Was I being stupid? Was I not in the shop and I was just in the menu? Is that what it is? All right, let's just do it again then. <laughs> What's happening? Who put the kid in charge? Two-handed. Two-handed. Nice. Two-handed. Dagger. I think that was it, wasn't it? Rare one-handed mace. Yeah, I didn't actually look at how that... I mean, I don't like maces. I just had this conversation. But That rare one-handed mace has got 18 to 24 damage on it, which is a lot better than the axe. So it's almost silly not to use it, I suppose. It's a required physique 62 as opposed to required physique 26 on my other one. But it doesn't have the granted skill of Ice Spike on that. Oh yeah, we'll hang on to it for now. We'll maybe try it out in the next part. In fact, I'll put it on so we can try it out in the next part. Although I am really liking me gun at the moment. Uh, hello, does that come in a large, please? <laughs> Look at the fucking size of it. <laughs> Lovely. That's what it looks like. Use. Yeah, it looks a bit uh, crazy, doesn't it? I'm gonna go back to my gun for now. Not picked up any rings or anything as yet. Right, well, there we are, folks. I think that is most likely an ideal place to wrap it up. I think we've got into well over an hour. About an hour and 14 minutes or so. But, oh, I can't... Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing more of this game. Um feel like I do feel oh, like, oh right okay <laughs> have I I've just discovered that I can pan the camera around which is, oh and zoom in and out so that would have helped me out a little bit wouldn't it well there you go people there's something else discovered before we uh, move away to the we'll finish up this part but yeah you can pan in and out and you can spin around. I didn't know that. And that's something you can't do in Titan Quest. So I just, by nature, didn't press anything. I just let her run in the... What, I just went with whatever the camera was doing. So there you go. Brilliant. That is absolutely fantastic. That that feature in a game like this is priceless when you're trying to just see round where a door is and stuff like that. I did struggle a bit there, trying to find out where the doors were. You just have to pan it around. Brilliant. It's really smooth at panning around like that. So I do I do feel like this is a 60. Anyway. Right, I ramble on people. But I'm really looking forward to doing a second part of this. I hope that's helped people out to try and decide whether or not they want to spend their £45 or $50, $60, whatever it is. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And you can see how much care and attention has gone into this game. And I mean... It's gorgeous to, to play, and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into these uh, these skill points and everything. There's so Those trees look really interesting. So there you go. I shall definitely be doing a part two, and, well, I mean, I'm really hoping you guys want to see more of this because I'd love to throw loads of this up on the channel. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in Grim Dawn on the Xbox Series X, and I shall catch you in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.